सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली दिस चाइनीज स्पाइशिप पिक्चर यू बीन सींग लेटली दिस इज कमिंग इन टू द इंडियन ओशन रीजन इन टू द रीजन ऑफ आर इंटरेस्ट इंडिया इंटरेस्ट इंडियन ओशन इज ह्यूज बट इंडिया इंटरेस्ट इन द सेंस दिस इज जनरली गेटिंग इन टू द रीजन ऑफ द इंडियन ओशन दैट पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन ओशन वेर मिसाइल्स दैट इंडिया लॉन्चेस फ्रॉम इट्स टेस्टिंग रेंजेस ऑन द ईस्टर्न कोस्ट दे ट्रेवल so it is widely understood and you know this is too logical to be not true or not not, not correct that this ship is floating into this area not just for an errand or just to have just to have a little sailing practice it is there to pick up intelligence or indian missile launches because these ships have very sophisticated electronic radar and other equipment so they pick up a lot of stuff including not just your trajectories and ranges and all that but also your also the signature of your missiles for various sensors etc etc because you know for every missile that one side has the other side has to develop a counter we are seeing this in the ukraine russia war russia is launching lobbing a lot of missiles in ukraine i would say from all the data that's internationally available to us almost 70 to 80% now are being intercepted by ukrainian counter missile missiles or counter missile system so that's one thing but as i was reading up on this and trying to find out more on this ship and the chinese intelligence activities particularly vis-a-vis the other powers including india in the indian ocean region i also discovered something that truth to tell i had mostly missed out on and if it featured on indian media i am sure it was on some inside foreign page not not highlighted as it should have been but this is now an ongoing story in international media and i will share a bunch of links with you from reuters forbes economist etc etc bbc uh, guardian please see this if you want to what's happening right now is a larger scandal has broken out of the chinese essentially the chinese pla recruiting retired or former pilots combat pilots from british new zealand australian and american air forces so four of the five five eyes countries canada is not surfaced as yet but chances are that it's a matter of time canada will also surface so the common factor is that the chinese pla has been trying to hire former combat pilots both fixed wing that is jet planes as well as combat helicopters from these countries to come and train their pilots in their countries now you might you might ask me that how come the aircraft the chinese have are entirely the ones they've made themselves or they've imported from russia or that they've bought from russia and then reverse engineered may be improved may be modified those are russian origin aircraft so why are they getting western pilots or five eyes alliance pilots to come and train them so this is being done for two reasons one because western countries who are likely to be their adversaries particularly if combat breaks out over taiwan or as the fogies armed forces people like to say if the balloon goes up over taiwan they will be facing these pilots so it's handy to learn their tactics to learn their technology to learn what are their strengths their weaknesses but also also in the armed forces particularly in air combat there is also there is also a concept now of an adversary somebody becomes your adversary while training in this case this is a category of professional pilots who are described as contract adversaries so you get these pilots on contract and they become your adversaries to, so it helps you train <laughs> but it looks like the pilots the chinese have been hiring from these countries retired pilots or retired pilots or pilots who finish their tenure of duty still active in their flying life they are being hired to do more than just be contract adversaries they are being hired for training so in april there was an incident which the economist 
quotes mentions in fact we've seen some pictures on social media also and we are searching for them if I, if i can find one before this is published we'll use that as well this was a case where a chinese combat aircraft crashed in the eastern region of china in eastern china and two pilots ejected obviously one trainer and one trainee one pilot was chinese the other was a white man with red hair so the local people rescued these pilots and local people in china everybody likes to video, make videos they began making videos they switched on a camera and they were asking the chinese pilot who is this guy looking at the other guy pointing at the other guy and the chinese pilot said in fact the economist story mentions this in, this in some detail the chinese pilot tells these people listen first of all switch off the camera you are not supposed to record this he is our trainer so obviously these guys are training them but this happened in april what has happened just now what's happened just now is remember a name daniel edmund dugan d u g g a n now daniel edmund dugan is a former combat pilot from us air force us air force he spent about a decade there then he relocated to australia another five eyes country five eyes are you know five eyes as you know we've discussed this in the past of the five anglophone english speaking countries were also treaty allies for their security that is america canada britain united kingdom australia and new zealand so he shifted to he relocated to australia in australia he set up a company a flying company an aviation company called top gun tasmania tasmania as you know is a province of australia where also the famous test match venue hobart is located now top gun tasmania what it does is what it used to do it doesn't exist anymore what it used to do was to take rich tourists out for joy rides on fighter planes so you can you can get second hand fighter planes these are things that are done in a lot of these western countries have a bunch of veteran combat pilots and and fly your high ticket paying tourist around in these fighter planes after all if somebody can get onto a spaceship to go in outer space to spend his money why can't some people fly in fighter planes so that is what he was doing and suddenly it looked like he had shut down this company he has now surfaced in the australian press and by extension in international defense and security and intelligence publications social media handles as well daniel edmund dugan has now been arrested by the australian police in the province of new south wales and he's been arrested on a request or on a requisition from fbi in the us which wants him extradited to the us why because he's seen as somebody who flew with the us air force and has now gone to china to train chinese pilots so he was in australia he was arrested by the australian police he was produced uh, for bail in the court he was denied bail and he is now in jail pending in his extradition proceedings and between america and australia there is a fairly strong extradition treaty so the odds today are that he will be extradited to america and face trial now what happened with him his story tells us about the modus operandi of the chinese and how it works because one thing takes us to another now from the records that we know and that we have seen and also from court filings although most of the court filings in this case are classified and in sealed cover because after all this is a security espionage kind of issue he shut down this company he wound up this company top gun tasmania in 2014 and then moved to beijing and what happened after he moved to beijing so once again the reuters story tells us that his linkedin profile says that in 2017 in qingdao the chinese city of qingdao he set up another company that company was av biz limited and he became the managing director of av biz limited whose function linkedin tells us was comprehensive aviation consultancy with special focus on growing chinese aviation sector his operations were based in qingdao the company was registered in hong kong in 2017 but it was dissolved in 2000 20 now british media after this in fact from this you move on from australian media to the british media what british media tells us is that there is an institution in south africa which is crucial to this which is central to this that is tfasa which is 
test flying academy of south africa now test flying academy of south africa the name sounds quite anodyne but they've been recruiting pilots particular particularly combat pilots from uk australia new zealand we told you about five eyes pilots now american pilots are different to recruit for things like this because american regulations and laws are very 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 strong Americans actually have a law called ITAR regulations which is United States International Traffic in Arms regulations so those are very tight so it's tough for american pilots to directly get into get into this business but the other countries don't have such strong laws that's why in fact the uk defense ministry has now been saying and there've been multiple formal statements by them that they are planning to pass new law to prohibit their pilots their former pilots combat pilots from going and training in china now that law is in the works and it will come in but the law will come in mainly because of the concerns raised by some of these new developments so dugan is one in new zealand new zealand defense force spokesperson has now said that they know about four former pilots from their air force who been recruited by the same tfa sa TFASA which is Test Flying Academy of South Africa they are important because they train a lot of the chinese pilots anyway they also train a lot of chinese commercial pilots and they claim in their statements to international media that look we we just give people basic flight training but that is not the case nobody believes that that's a very touchingly innocent statement but nobody believes it so these pilots are first hired by tfsa tfasa and then the implication is that they are then sent out on secondment loan etc etc to the chinese pla and the, at the chinese pla once again if you read up what's available in the military social media military semi academic publications the fees these days or salaries for these pilots are about 2 lakh 70 thousand dollars a year how much is that you calculate that's almost like 3 crores a year which is a lot of money and it is left tax free say in china so it's a lot of money plus you get to fly the planes you are excited to fly instead of going into an airline and doing the relatively boring job or humdrum job of flying an airliner so you can do combat flying you can teach and train you can also do adventurous things because you are playing adversary and at the same time earn the kind of money you could not have dreamt of while you were actually in service now new zealand says that they don't have a regulation banning anybody from serving in other countries after retiring but they are looking at their regulations now so the least that will happen is that people who go to adversarial countries now they will not get security clearance anymore for any any jobs in new zealand with any security implications but that is really that is really at the lower end of the concern to hear the higher end of the concern you have to listen to the australian defense minister richard marl who says i would be deeply shocked and disturbed to hear that they were personnel who were being loaded by paychecks from a foreign state above serving their own country and in australia the opposition parties a defense spokesperson or like the shadow defense minister from the opposition party the liberal party andrew hasty he said that he knows of at least two more australian pilots who been loaded or who were at least offered by the chinese pla again global military intelligence social media and publications which are usually professional publications they tell us that on the website of something called setp which is society of experimental test pilots an ad has been placed by the south african academy that is tfas it's a private academy for for hiring for hiring fixed wing and helicopter pilots for serving in an undisclosed location in far eastern asia now where can that be far east asia you can figure out your guess i am 100% will be the same as mine it can only be china it can be japan it can't be korea it can only be china and this advertisement is offering these contracts for a four year period now us and uk they've both been getting much more worried about it and they've been they've been talking about it and they've been saying that we are concerned the bbc tells us that at least 30 former british pilots mainly raf maybe some royal navy also they've been serving they've been serving and training in china 
and uk government is now saying that we need to take decisive steps to stop this by the way this guy the dugan fellow he was also an expert on harrier jump jet flying now harrier jump jets have gone out of fashion now indian navy also used to fly them with the original bikram nobody flies that plane anymore at least not that i know of no active large air, navy or air force but maybe when he was doing his recreational work with top gun tasmania that was of great value because i'm sure or second hand or discarded harrier jump jets must have been available cheap and also it's a it's a different kind of experience one to fly in a combat aircraft and then or in a vstol or vertical and short takeoff landing aircraft like unusual aircraft like Harrier. Now the British are now saying that they want to pass a new law, as I mentioned just a few minutes back, to prevent any more people going in. Jeremy Fleming, who is the director of GCHQ, GCHQ is Britain's Signal and Electronic Intelligence Agency. G GCHQ stands for Government Communication Headquarters, a bit like NSA in America. He has said that, look, I am very worried and we have to do something about it. Sometime back, in fact, we had published a full episode of Cut the Clutter on a joint statement or joint speeches made by the MI chief, that is General Ken McCallum, and also his American counterpart, the FBI chief, Christopher Wray, in London at MI5 headquarters, when they had raised many concerns about the Chinese spying and intelligence intelligence operations and how sophisticated they were, etc., etc. This doesn't stop here. The more you read, the more you find. La Figaro, the French publication, also has a story saying that several former French Air Force pilots have also been similarly re-employed by the Chinese. And there is concern and that is something that will worry, that should worry us in India specifically because a lot of the aircraft, combat aircraft, frontline combat aircraft that the Indian Air Force flies are of French origin and the French Rafale, the naval version, is also on the shortlist for the Indian Navy for their new aircraft carriers. Now, as we have seen, the Australians, the Americans, the French, the British, the New Zealanders, they've all had different levels of concern. The Americans look the most worried of all. They also have the toughest laws. So the most telling quote that I have seen is from Lieutenant General David Deptula, who is a former general of the US Air Force, who now runs a think tank come training academy, who's been quoted in Forbes magazine as saying that, look, if any pilot from our alliance are going and serving in China like this, that borders on treason. So all of this is now added up to a very interesting picture of how sophisticated and complex and frankly and grudgingly how effective these Chinese operations are. So when you look at that ship, that spy ship, and then you follow the story on what goes on. We have a story again today on how Indian Navy will try to prevent this ship from at least coming into an Indian exclusive economic zone. Remember that what you're dealing with is a very extensive of Chinese operation that works in multiple dimensions.